Hello and welcome to the Scannable channel and today let me present to you guys some of the best PCs you can build for the month of June. And specifically on PCBuilds.gg, I have four newly revised PC builds I want to show to you guys today, as well as I need to give you guys an apology. There's a very crucial component I've been pushing in some of my latest PC build videos that actually due to some false marketing doesn't have something that I really like to have in my PC builds and I've had to revamp all of my builds to accommodate for this. So yes, you'll be getting an apology later in this video, but more on that in a bit. So there isn't a sponsor for this video, but if you feel inclined to do so, a like would be greatly appreciated because literally you guys watching these videos and the ad revenue I make from it goes back into keeping this website afloat to help out other PC gamers easily build PCs that are the best in their price ranges. Anyways though, if you're unfamiliar though, this is my website pcbuilds.gg. It's a pretty cool interactive website that'll automatically categorize different PC builds for you based off your needs, whether that be budget, if you have a preferred CPU or GPU manufacturer, say if you want to be unique and go with an Intel based build, you can indeed do that. Or if you want to hit a specific certain performance target with your build, like if you want to hit 1440p, 240 FPS, you've got a multitude of builds you can choose from. Or if there's a specific use you want to hit with your PC, like if you want something that is guaranteed to work with a virtual reality headset, you can go ahead and select that and see a multitude of different builds. Although mm, this $600 build could run VR, uh, I might tick that off, but everything else here, yeah, I definitely will. And this website is by me, it's pretty cool. Again, all of the PC builds I'm gonna show off in today's video are gonna be hosted on this website. And I'll go ahead and start with the first build, but a note on what I said just now. If we check my $1,200 build, which I am going to bring to life in a future PC build video, and you check the storage, it is something different. An SSD I've been pushing a lot in my latest PC build guides has been the Kingspec XG7000 because for the longest time I thought that SSD, especially for a one terabyte drive, offered the best performance at the lowest price, all the while having a DRAM controller. And unfortunately, in part, I think due to Kingspec not really specifying this earlier on when they first unveiled the SSD, the XG7000 doesn't have a DRAM controller. It does not. And I've been telling you guys for the longest time that it does and it doesn't. So I want to apologize because if you bought that SSD, it's not the end of the world, but it doesn't have a DRAM controller, which is really upsetting. Kingspec only clarified that I think recently. And even on Reddit, now people are picking up that that SSD is DRAMless, whereas the XG7000 Pro does have a DRAM controller, but that SSD costs substantially more than the regular XG7000. So I'm a bit disappointed in myself for continuing to push that SSD in these build guides, even though it doesn't have a DRAM controller, which you absolutely wanna have an SSD with one of those just to preserve its read and write speeds over time. So since then I have changed it and I've got a few options here across Newegg, Amazon, and even Best Buy. So right now the best bang for the buck, M.2 SSD, that features a DRM controller is gonna have to be this Team Group T-Force G50. This is a mid-range M.2 NVMe SSD. It's got read and write speeds of around 5,000 megabytes per second, so it's not blisteringly fast, but who really needs 7,000 if you're a gamer? But this does have a DRAM controller, and if we look here in the marketing, this not only has traditional SLC caching, which is what the XG7000 has, but it also has DRAM caching, and that's what we want. So you can be rest assured that this drive here, for about the same price, does have a DRAM controller. And for two terabytes as well, it's also fairly valuable for the price. And it looks like this is brand new, no one's bought it yet, but according to the spec sheets, it should be pretty good. Then on Amazon, we have the trusty A440. I've used this SSD before. This also has a DRAM controller and also has SLC caching. So you're also covered with this SSD, but it's a little more costly. But then at Best Buy, the cheapest M.2 SSD that has a DRAM controller is actually going to have to be the Crucial T500. Even the new 990 Evo that is from Samsung doesn't have a DRAM controller, even though it's PCI Gen 4.0. So that is 90 bucks but this for a few dollars more does have that DRAM controller. So those are the newest up-to-date SSD choices you'll find on PC Bill GG. All of these will for surely have a DRAM controller in them. 
Also because I know you guys are bringing it up, but there's also another SSD that is already on the website that I used to have for one terabyte. But as you just saw, there's some other one terabyte M.2 SSDs you can snack for a little bit cheaper. But the GM7000 is also a very fast M.2 SSD that has a DRM controller. Anyways, with that out of the way, let's go ahead and cover some of the new builds I have on the website, starting with the one I'm actually making right now in an upcoming build video. This is a $1,200 build that I'm already telling you guys right now, I, again, don't see the need to build anything faster than this. It maxed out anything at 1440p. I ran Fortnite on it at the lowest settings at 1440p, and it got over 250 FPS. I ran Starfield with frame generation, with everything maxed out, and it was getting about 100 FPS at 1440p. And you can get that with a CPU like a 7600X, because I'd rather you spend a little bit more over a 7600 or even 7500F for a 7600X, especially if in this system, you're probably already gonna get an aftermarket cooler, so it looks cool, because who's gonna use a stock cooler in this price of a PC? And the 7600X for, I think about $10 more than a 7600 is worth it, especially if you can cool it off with an aftermarket cooler, like what I've got linked here. But the main juice is gonna have to be the 7800 XT, which right now on the website, you can snag one of these for $480, which is very good for the price. Its performance is just, it is the best selling RX 7000 card from AMD. And there's a good reason why. It's probably the one standout graphics card from the RX 7000 lineup, other than the 7900 GRE, that very much outperformed its predecessor while coming in at a very reasonable price, which couldn't really be said for other graphics cards that were cheaper than this when they first came out. And the original 7900 XT and 7900 XTX at the time costed, I think a little bit too much, but since then they've come down in price and are now fairly competitive. But this right off the bat at launch was a competitive card. And in that build, <laughs> I'm just spoiler, it did very well, especially in Fortnite, which I know there's a stigma behind AMD cards in Fortnite, I didn't see it, it ran really well. But anyways, an ATX B650 motherboard from any of the big manufacturers will do well, along with 32 gigabytes of 6,000 megahertz cast latency, 30 RAM, and I know some of you guys have been pointing this out, but I can safely assure that the RAM choices that I have here are Expo ready. Although XMP works on these Ryzen AM5 CPUs, you can use Intel XMP, that'll also work, but now I've got the RAM so that it surely has XMP and Expo also supported at the same time for both Intel and AMD systems. Anyways, there's the SSDs, I already just talked about that. But then for the case, once again, I gotta give a shout out to the Montex Sky 2. This is an excellent bang for the buck PC case that comes with four pre-included fans and they're all cable routed to a single ARGB and fan controller that's on the back of the PC case. And it's a beautiful sight to see for $90. Oh, this might be 80 actually with the $10 off coupon code. It's a fantastic case. Montech probably have the best budget PC cases in the game right now. And it's gonna definitely look great as well. And the build quality is there. All you need for this, as well as a 750 watt 80 plus gold power supply, that is going to be enough to power on everything you need for this build. And then here's my recommended monitor, 240 Hertz, 1440p, IPS, 27 inches. There you have it. This is an excellent PC. I, again, don't see the need to spend any more than that. But speaking of, uh, if you wanted to spend more at 4K and do ray tracing, this $1,800 build, which is now revised, features a different GPU from before. Now this is using an RTX 4070 Ti Super, and I'm noticing I'm noticing that 4070 Ti Supers are now going for comfortably below MSRP, like this one from Zotac, for $780. And I think, in a way, this might be a slightly better buy now than a 7900 XT, because for $80 more, in my opinion, I think you get a slightly more well-rounded card Although in terms of raw performance, it does lose out to the 7900 XT and it does have four gigabytes less of VRAM, but for 780 with that ray tracing, which you'd want in a graphics card that costs this much, it's not that bad. And it does come with four extra gigabytes of VRAM over the original 4070 Ti. If this card keeps coming down in price, I'm probably gonna firmly recommend it from now on in my buyer's guides. 
but it's in this build for $1,800. And everything else is as you'd expect, a B650E motherboard, a two terabyte M.2 SSD, which again, all of these feature a DRAM controller. And then for the case, I was thinking, we got an extra bit of budget to spend, so why not go ahead and put that into a case with a vertical GPU mount so we can proudly show off that graphics card. And I think the Y40 is the way to go because there's so many different color options and it's actually come down in price to about 130 bucks, which makes it appealing because it comes with a vertical GPU mount that is PCI Gen 4.0. In a way, it's actually a bit of a value proposition if you want a vertical vertically mounted graphics card in your PC case. An 850 watt 80 plus gold, that's all you need. And for 1800 bucks, I don't think you need to build this cause it's really flipping fast, but there you go. It's plenty fast. Then as you guys just saw, I created a updated $500 gaming PC that is faster than the last one that I did back in October of last year, because this time we're using a slightly faster CPU, like a Ryzen 5 5500 or a 3600. And then for the GPU, we're using a A580. This is actually, I think, about as fast as a 5700 XT, unless you wanna run Starfield or Grand Theft Auto V. But other than that, they're pretty much gonna be about the same. So you're getting a slight bump in the CPU and a more reliable graphics card that anyone can purchase. Cause the 5700 XT, you could maybe snag that from AliExpress brand new, but those are kind of hard to come by. So whereas the A580 is here right now, I think for 160, yeah, 160, that's a very excellent price. And it's the best budget graphics card under 200 bucks. Also, what I think is pretty cool is that here when it comes to the cases, you can go with the original DIY PC ARGB case that I used in the build that now with this version two revision is actually really good. It's definitely made some improvements over the version one that I used in my previous $800 PC build. So I'm comfortable recommending this case now, especially with the pre-included fans. But if you wanted something from Amazon, if you can't get your hands on that from Newegg, there is this Apivia Prism that is more or less gonna be the same thing. Comes with two extra ARGB fans and it looks, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if this is using the same chassis as the other case I just showed you. Cause even the IO here on the top looks way too similar to the last one. But this is more expensive by about 20 bucks, but it's on Amazon. And then the last build let's go ahead and highlight for today's video is going to have to be this new $600 gaming PC. This one was a little tough, but fortunately I had some help from my buddy Nima Stark to create this build list. We went back and forth on a few ideas because there were a lot of different CPU and GPU combos we could try for $600, which is actually a good thing. That means you could build something respectable. And we settled on a $600 PC with an i3-12100F paired with a 6650XT. So you can still get the 12100F for a pretty nice price. Now at 85 bucks on Newegg, although my website, it reports it as 106, so disregard that. And then for the graphics card, is it really 300 bucks on Best Buy? There's no way. Oh, it is, okay. But on Amazon, this is definitely going to be, yeah, about 230. Yep. You can still get the 6650XT. I think that's not too much of an ask even this late into 2024, although this graphics card shouldn't exist anymore. But there's no really good other graphics cards for about the same price. So I don't think I'll make a build guide on this because I am wondering if that 6650XT will be discontinued at any point in the future especially with AMD's RX 8000 cards on the horizon. But regardless, if you want it, it's here in this build list and you can copy it part by part. And the other thing that I really like about it too, is that the motherboard choice that we have, this B660M Pro RS, is probably one of the cheapest micro ATX motherboards, period, when it comes to USB Type-C support. So if you look right there, there's a Type-C port. And for the case, this one has been gaining some traction on Amazon, but there's this case here from this company called Okinos. And for 60 bucks, you can get this Aqua 3 that comes with three pre-included fans, a USB Type-C port, a mesh bottom chamber here for your graphics card. And I think you can fit decently long graphics cards in here, not super long because you can't really fit two additional fans here on the right, but I think this is a nifty case for the price. So yeah, an Intel and AMD based build for $600. This is also gonna be great bang for the buck and will provide a pretty decent chunk in performance over the $500 build that I previously showed you because that 6650 XT for its price is pretty hard to beat. 
So that's my quick overview of the new builds and the SSD correction I've made to PC builds.gg. Once again, all of these builds can be found in the description below if you wanna check out any of them as well as the other multitude of builds I have on this website. So with all of that said, thank you so much for watching and this is the Scatterville channel, signing out.